All right, ready? <laughs> I guess. I guess. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Macho Movie Madness. Oh, yeah. I am Brandon. Alongside me always is Andrew. We're in person today, and we are recording Warehouse B, episode 30. 30. Wow. Episode 30, and it's going to be Zardos. <laughs> guys welcome back and today we are talking about zardos out of 1974 starring sean connery and i'll be completely honest i have no fucking clue what's going on <laughs> in this movie i've watched it i've tried to watch it several times several attempts we finally finished it today watching an explanation video on it today and i think i kind of get it but I really don't. Yeah. I watched it once several years ago and I'm like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. And I watched it here recently and I'm like, okay, I kind of see what's going on. But um, yeah, what a wild movie. Uh, Every now and again, I feel like we have to pull one of these out. Just yeah. To... Just to throw me off. <laughs> I don't really don't much to say. Like it, it's, it's just, why don't, can you, can you, do you think you can run through a plot? Oh goodness. Maybe. Um, so it's in the 23rd century. You've got like two different kinds of people. You have these immortals uh, called the Eternals that live in the Vortex. Outside of the Vortex in the Outlands, you have the Brutals. And uh, they are not immortal. You have basically the Exterminators, who Sean Connery, his character is Zed. That's him, him behind us. Strapping young gentleman. Yes, yes, in his red nappy and his bandoliers. Zardoz orders them to kill everyone. Zardoz is this floating head. The yeah. Gun is good. Yeah, gun is good. And the penis is evil. He, yeah. Yeah, this is long past the time of procreation. <laughs> That's not needed. Yeah. And so the, they go and they kill everyone. Um, Zardoz at one point tells Zed that they need to start harvesting grain, taking these people and enslaving them instead of killing them. And so he goes and hides inside the Zardoz head, finds Arthur Frayne, this dude, He's in the very opening scene with the penciled on beard and mustache. Yeah, yeah, it looks it's... so ridiculous. <laughs> like they literally took a marker and just yeah. drew a soul patch on him. And it's like the Wizard of Oz, which you find out that's where Zardoz comes from. Right. And he shoots Arthur Frayne, uh, takes the head to the vortex, and uh, you know, kind of finds out what's going on. They uh they're these people who are devoid of any joy. They have no purpose. Uh, you know, that there's no more procreation there. They just meditate. Yeah, right. And so... It's not even really sleeping. It's just meditating. Yeah. And so uh, it's funny that Sean Connery has more purpose in his life than they do in their life. And he's just, you know... Just this guy. Killing people. Just kill, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, after that, you know, they, they kind of study him. And uh, he kind of turns them... Uh, you know, they're, they're looking... They're kind of looking for death by the end of the movie. Um, they find out there's this whole deal with AI. There's the tabernacle in this deal that's kind of controlled their world and made them what they are. Ah, the whole thing's just wild. Yeah. <laughs> and that's that's kind of, I'm, I'm glossing over some things, but that's the best I can do for a plot. Yeah. Yeah, you've got like little bits of, little bits of Wizard of Oz, you got little bits of the Matrix-ish yeah. kind of stuff going on. Um, yeah. You know, everything's designed and put in a certain way for Zed, and then you come to find out that it's the same way for the Eternals. Yeah. And by the end of that, they just, after realizing it, they have no purpose. They just, and they end up freeing themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Zed ends up getting inside the tabernacle, which yeah. was a, is a crazy scene. It's some so terrible, silly. terrible acting from so Sir bad. Sean Connery. Yeah. This whole movie's full of mad acting. Yeah. Lines, but. So the vortex is broken. The brutals come in and, and pretty much the Eternals are just begging to be to be killed yeah. in their existence yeah, please kill me yeah yeah so this movie really 
I mean, it's about a lot of things. It's about artificial intelligence with, with the tabernacle. Right. It's about uh, de-evolution, you know, when yeah. these people that lose all their humanity, all their autonomy. Um, yeah, it's just, it's it's crazy, and I'm not sure what all to say about it. I don't know. I don't know either. I When you said let's do that, I, I just, I, I, I knew it was going to be weird. I knew it was going to be bad, but I wasn't really sure what I was even getting myself into. How far the rabbit I mean, hole look at went. Shit. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. I, and after attempting to watch it three or four times and finally finishing it, I still am just like, I, this is, yeah, this is terrible. <laughs> this is just terrible. <laughs> of course. It's, it's got a theme in it that I appreciate. Yeah. Once you kind of like, you explain when you can explain it to someone and you can kind of understand a little bit. I appreciate that they attempted something so crazy in 1974. Yeah, on a 1.6 million dollar budget, which is also crazy that this has a 1.6 million dollar budget because <laughs> it doesn't look like because it doesn't look like it at all. It looks like it's way less. Like they did not. I don't know if it's because most of it came with Sean Connor. I don't know what it was. Yeah, but. with inflation, what would that be? Over five million in today's maybe, dollars, probably. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, Jonathan Borman or John Borman directed this thing. You might know him from Deliverance and Excalibur. Yeah, uh, he was given carte blanche uh, to do whatever he wanted for this movie, and, and, and boy, did he! <laughs> um, pros for the movie. What did you like about it? Well, oof, pros for the movie. Okay, so what did you say earlier before we started? The visuals yeah. of the movie, while it's cheesy and the acting's terrible to go along with it. The attempts at this futuristic technology, and it was somewhat commendable in 1974, I think, for the budget. I think visualistically, it's it's not that bad. Uh, I mean, not the costumes, but <laughs> but like the you know, maybe effects and, and the scenery, maybe some of the. Um, like, oh yeah, it's it's in a beautiful shot in a beautiful place in Ireland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's it's that that's a pro. Um, I guess the attempt at doing something crazy in 1974 is another pro. Um, other than that, that's about it. Yeah. I don't like the costumes. Um, I, it's, it's way, it's really muddled. The acting's awful. The, the, um, the Eternals, or is that who it was that go, go around just wrecking things? Oh, uh, no, no, those are the, those are the exterminators. Exterminators, excuse they're, me. They're brutals, technically. Yeah, yeah, okay. So they, they just, like a moan all the time in the movie and it's terrible like it's it's just really off oh no that was the eternals yeah they were inside moaning. the vortex okay yeah, yeah. okay yeah that, that, they were just in the vortex just wrecking shit and they're just moaning and and they're going after cuz they're going after him and that it was just annoying, it was annoying. um this, yeah the line delivery was was awful then it was pretty funny when all of them got killed at the end <laughs> and not because, not just because of the death, but how they were dying. Yeah. Like, I, there was a, like, they were just shooting them and stabbing them and they were dying. Instantly Blood and, smears. Yeah. And they're ah, oh, and this is sound effects. <laughs> it was, it was pretty bad. It, th that was funny. Uh, even though it wasn't supposed to be. Yeah. Just bad, man. It's just too much of a jumbled mess. And, and he really phoned it in, man. Sean phoned it in. For, yeah. Which is understandable. But I mean, you're coming off James Bond. Yeah, Diamonds Are Forever, which is one of the worst Bonds. It is one of the worst I, Bonds. I can still appreciate it for yeah. what it is. Um, I like the visuals. I, I thought the music for what little bit was in there, it, the orchestra and everything, I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the acting, we were laughing. There's a scene um, where Sean Connery, oh, where he's out of it, and uh, Consuela comes up and kisses him. And he wakes up and immediately starts giving orders. Yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> we, go. We were follow laughing me, at follow that me. scene. Like what? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. He just got he just to get out of the tabernacle. He shot this, the, himself. Yeah, or something. <laughs> something I can't remember. Anyway, he was like out cold when they found him. They picked him up, and then she just like walked over, wait, and kissed him on the forehead, and then yeah. he just like immediately woke up. Follow me. It was just the most yeah. dry, quick. Act, I don't know. It's it's bad. There's a scene. I, I believe it was friend who we were laughing. He looks just like Paul McCartney. Yeah, he sounds kind of like him too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey. And uh, he he like whips Sean Connery, who reacts like a second and a half later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was that was great <laughs> for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. These these this is a damn British. <laughs> telling you we're shooting us on the fourth of july yeah, yeah we're shooting us on the fourth of july so happy fourth of july <laughs> independence day to everybody um and now this is just one more reason why we left the british 
this is this is the reason right here. <laughs> things like Zardoz. Things like, like yeah, yeah, this is the fucking reason. Um, it sounds like I enjoyed it a little more than you, but I kind of knew what I was in for too. Right. You, you had never seen it. Right. But right. I think it's one of those that on the second watch, kind of, kind of like not that Blade Runner's bad, but kind of like Blade Runner, you kind of, you kind of get it. Yeah. You know what what they were shooting for. So I I can I can respect it for that, and I kind of enjoy it and all of its campiness. Yeah. So yeah, I, I say I I can appreciate some of it to a point, given the year. Um, what they were trying to do with it just something weird, really weird something different yeah um but yeah i i don't think i i don't have to watch it again yeah i i, I probably won't unless there's a, some other reason like <laughs> like this to do it do so um yeah i don't i don't feel like it, i mean it took me enough tries to get through it so yeah it's still better than night beast well, that's good. Yeah I, yeah, I I can at least get through this movie. Night, Night, Beast. Night Beast is still the worst movie we reviewed. Yeah, on this yeah. so far, Night Beast is still yeah. the worst reviewed movie for yeah. me yeah. on Where Else Be. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and, and this thing, I don't really know a whole lot to say about this one. It's just so weird. And if you guys are into weird shit, check it out. Or if you lived through the late '60s and early '70s and. You know, did LSD? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This maybe, will be maybe right consider, up your alley. Yeah, maybe consider revisiting. You know, <laughs> the glory days of, <laughs> of '70s cinema. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but I, what would you what would you score this thing? Um, out of five. So I appreciate the big ideas, even though the acting and everything was was pretty terrible. Um, I'm going to go two and three quarter. Two and three quarter. Yeah, I can't go three. I, I don't think there's enough there to go three, but I, I do like the big ideas. I'm going to, I don't remember what I gave Night Beast. I'm going to give this two and a half, though. Yeah. Well, I think we went two straight across two, the board. Okay, I'm giving it two and a half. It is better than Night Beast. And that's the biggest selling point for it. Yeah. If you know, if you got through Night Beast, you can get through Zardoz. <laughs> <laughs> so, anything else you want to say? Yeah, yeah. They're both equal levels of frustration, yeah. those movies. Yeah. Um, no. Um, Except Sean Connery has just too much hair. Yeah. I mean, for real. Just look at this. <laughs> anyway. Um, what do we got coming up for Warehouse B next? We, have we talked about that? Um, yeah, I, I think dating all the way back to episode 26 when we did Split Second, we had a poll up. Split Second won that poll at the time that we closed it. But as time went on, The Perfect Weapon featuring Jeff Speakman actually got more votes. Okay. And so I noticed it. And so we're going to do that. It's a fun martial arts movie. Yeah. Uh, one guy taking down the Yakuza. You know how we like movies like Showdown Little Tokyo. Hell yeah. This has that kind of feel to it. So That sounds more exciting than this, for sure. <laughs> that's, that's on tap next time for Warehouse B. So Sweet. Be ready episode to see 31. It. Yeah. Episode 31. Sweet. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up today. we got a lot of cool content coming up for you guys. Stay tuned. Until then, we'll we're see you next time. We're out of here.